after Epiphany to Lent, preparing for Easter. And as we make this transition, we, we see transfiguration where Jesus is preparing to go towards Jerusalem to die on the cross. And before he goes, he is reminded once again by God that this is my son and we should do what? Listen to him. Unfortunately, most of us suffer from what I call, or maybe what I should say, most, I suffer from what my wife accused me of, foot in mouth disease. I quite often say and do things, and like Peter, I just blurt things out. As a matter of fact, I suffer from this disease so much that my daughter have a comedy routine about me. Because quite often in dealing in situations, most of us don't know what we should say. And that's the title of today's sermon, Not Knowing What to Say. We're like Peter, we, we just see things and we, first thing that pops in our mind, without thinking, we do what? Learn it out. And I'm guilty of that. And I'm sure if you all are honest with yourself, you are also what? Guilty of foot and mouth disease. We don't know what to say, so we just say first thing that pops in our mind. I, I blame the fact that I'm originally from Belize and I think a little differently. The speech pattern, thought pattern is a little different. But my wife and kids uh, have made a list, of, a long list, unfortunately, of the strange things that I have said. My oldest daughter for years had a comedy routine that she did at college concerning her father. And the way she did it was, the thing that distinguished me for her was my mustache. And the honest truth is, my mustache is really not mine. Y'all probably look and say, oh, that's kind of strange, isn't it? But when I met my wife, I had a mustache. And back then, I shaved it off and then it would grow back. I shaved it off. She looked at me and said, grow it back and never shave it again. So, it's her mustache on my lips. <laughs> so, my daughter would stick her finger in front of her mouth and do her father's impression for all the crazy, stupid things I have said. For example... One of the plates we have is one of the original plates we got when we first got married. And I referred to, hey, I want that plate for it's the plate I got married with. And my wife would say, you didn't get married to the plate. You didn't get married with the plate. It was a gift. You know, but again, not knowing what to say, we say what? Crazy things. And that's exactly what happened with Peter. He was terrified. After all, look at what happened. Jesus was transfigured. I don't know if you understand what that means, but the veil between the physical world and the spiritual world was temporarily what? Ripped apart. And they can see Elijah and Moses talking with Jesus. And Peter, not knowing what to say, said, Master, Rabbi, we should build three. We read the story earlier about Elijah being taken up into heaven. And the, in a sense, the same thing happened. Elijah was taken and Elisha was able to see him. Towards the end, did you notice that Elijah said, If you see me, then you will receive double spirit. If you don't see me, it, it means that you are limited only to the physical world and cannot see the spiritual but Elisha was able to see it. But the big difference between Elisha and Peter is that Elisha did not suffer from foot and mouth disease. As we follow the story, we see that Elijah tells him, I gotta go from where we are down to Bethel. And Elisha, Elisha and Elijah both knew that God was going to take him that day. And Elijah wanted to go what? By himself. But Elijah said, as surely as the Lord live, I will not leave what? You. 
And the other prophets came up from Bethlehem and said, Do you know that your master will be taken from you today? And he said, Yes, I know. Be what? Be quiet. How many of us, whenever we are in a situation, rather than be quiet, we have to have foot and mouth disease or worse, we run at the mouth and say things. I'm guilty of it. Again, my daughter goes on and points out all this crazy stuff I've done. We're in a restaurant and, you know, for whatever reason I say something and my daughter says, you have to excuse him, you know he's foreign. <laughs> I mean, my own kids have to make an excuse for me. You know, he doesn't quite understand, he's foreign. But let's be realistic. I speak English perfectly, it's my first language. It's not like, you know, I had to learn it. But we all suffer from it, don't we? We don't know what to say, so... Jesus had to tell them, you know, be quiet. We see over and over, Elijah had to tell the prophets, not only at Bethlehem, but at all the different places, Jericho, and even on the way to the Jordan. I know, be what? Quiet. Isn't that what the Bible says? Whenever we encounter God, we should be still and be what? Quiet. But here we see Peter could not do that, and he had to ramble on, say things without thinking. Far too often we do that, and when we do it, we say the wrong thing. Thing. I know I do. How often do we say the wrong thing and make the situation what? Worse. Sometimes the best thing to do is what? Be quiet and just be there with the person. That's one of the most difficult lessons I had to learn as I, as I pastor the people, especially people who are dying. The most important thing is to just what? Be there, rather than giving all the answers and rambling on. Elijah was taken, and I want to, to talk about these two prophets for a moment. You see, it was Moses and Elijah, the two greatest prophets. The two prophets that struck water and the water divided so they could walk on what? Dry ground. I mean, these are the two greatest prophets, and Jesus, before he went to the cross, had a, a consultation, so to speak, with these two great prophets about what to expect. <clears throat> Who knows what they talked about. Peter, James, and John were there, and they witnessed it. And I am glad that Jesus told them, no, don't build the shelters. Because here's what would have happened if we knew the mountain and the place, exact location because there were shelters. What would we do? We would have, like we always do, you know, think about all the different religions, be it the Muslim, the Buddhist, the Hindus. They build shrines, they build temples, and they go to that place and that place only to worship. And But we as Christians, because we worship an invisible God who we cannot see with our physical eyes, where can we worship? Anywhere and everywhere. When can we worship? Anytime. Isn't it great? God, even though we are separated, God is ultimately what? Spirit. Isn't that what Jesus taught the woman in the well? God is spirit. Our ancestors worship in Jerusalem. Yours in the mountain. But reality is, we all will worship God one day in spirit and in truth. The transfiguration was when the physical and the spiritual were at one and the same place. Peter, James, and John could see it. They had a mountaintop experience. They were terrified. I don't know about you, but I would be kind of scared too. But in all fear, not knowing what to say, the best thing is to just say nothing and to worship God. Transfiguration Sunday marks the Sunday where we make the transition towards Easter. 
to where Christ is going to die on the cross for you and I. And as Paul writes in 2 Corinthians, some people do not see the spiritual because their mind is what? Veiled. Is there people that, you know, they think religion and religious stuff is garbage? Of course they are. There are people who don't believe in God because they cannot see Him. God is spirit. Why should we believe in this invisible God? But we who have Christ in us, we who call ourselves Christian, have had a spiritual experience. And I think we have it backwards. As I say, I have foot and mouth disease. Many of us think we have a spiritual experience because we have a body and we think we are our bodies and we have a spiritual experience when we encounter God. But the truth is just the opposite. We are spiritual beings who have a body and are having a what? A physical experience. I hope we, we can understand that because far too often we miss the point. We are spiritual beings made in the image and likeness of God. We have a mind, we have a body. But ultimately, we can talk about our body as my hand, my body, my... Are we our bodies? No. We are spiritual beings having a physical experience. But far too many of us are limited to just the physical and think we're physical beings that have spiritual experience. Transfiguration made it where we can see both the physical and the spiritual. Because ultimately Jesus is right. God is spirit. And those who worship Him, worship Him in spirit and truth. The Word of the Lord.